This memory card does not contain saved CMAN data. Would you like to create new data? So I'm a little hesitant to start talking for obvious reasons, but it's been saving the data to the memory card for maybe a minute now, and I don't know if anything's going on or not. So I figure I may as well just start. How are you guys? You doing good? I hope so. This project is a little something different for me. It's, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but what I do know is that I have seen bits and pieces of Seaman for years now. Usually only stills, maybe a gif. I saw a video where someone named it Fuckface at one point. But apart from that, I really don't know that much about it. I know that it requires daily interaction, so this is going to be... Something of an ongoing project for me. In fact, you guys are going to be seeing this maybe... Oh, I don't know. I kind of want to get a head start on this. So I just put up the... Uh, I'm trying to think. What is it? Part 55 of Dark Souls 3 went up yesterday, if that's a frame of reference. And Danganronpa 2 Part 33 went up today. Yeah. So here's the thing. This game is a Dreamcast exclusive. And, as you could tell, features the dulcet tones of Leonard Nimoy. And it's still going. My god, it's still going. Anyway. Uh... Seaman is... I don't know how best to explain it. If you have not seen anything of it, I think it's best experienced for yourself. I just... I, I don't know how else to put it. I figured that, uh, oh, what was it? Man, words are failing me again. So, I actually picked this up on eBay, and, I mean, so far it seems to be running okay, it's just taking a while to save. But it came complete with the microphone. Unfortunately, the, the fabric covering, like, the mesh or whatever it is, fell apart as I was trying to put it on. Probably just age and stuff. I think it's like a pop filter, but I'm not certain. Well, either way, it came complete with the instructions for it. You know, I really should go grab the instruction manual for Seaman so I know what I'm doing. Hold on, I'll be right back. Who knows, maybe it'll be done saving by then. You know what, though? This actually provides us a good opportunity to get some backstory on Seaman. Sorry, I was sliding in. Let's see. Well, right as I open it. Welcome to Dr. Gass's laboratory. Thank you for purchasing the Vivarium, the Vivarium Seaman kit. Please note that this software is designed only for use with a Dreamcast console. Be sure to read this instruction manual thoroughly before you start. This package contains a Seaman habitat and one Seaman egg. To begin with, let's learn a bit more about Seaman, shall we? Historical references to Seaman first appeared in the spoken folklore of ancient Egypt, passed down from generation to generation. Until recently, it was assumed that the Seaman creature did not actually exist, similar to the many other mythical creatures of ancient Egypt. However, in 1997, the discovery of a live Seaman in the Egyptian city of Old Alexandria disproved this assumption, and Seaman came to be known the world over. While the originally discovered Seaman specimen died shortly after being captured, its remains were quickly rushed to the foremost biological research institute in France, where a number of eggs were discovered inside its body, we at Vivarium were then able to assist in this endeavor by covering the research and development costs in return for the sole distribution rights that have enabled us to offer this product to you. It is well known that this that as part of its genetic labeling, Seaman passes knowledge on to subsequent human generations orally. Furthermore, Seaman is said to have strong influ have had a strong influence on the progression of ancient civilization, but the details of exactly how this was done are not yet fully understood. A VMU is required to play Seaman. In order to save game data, the VMU to be used must be formatted, have at least 64 memory blocks of free space available, and no other VMU applications saved. Well, that certainly explains it. I've got Dino Crisis and stuff on there. Hmm. Unless that's not what it means. Well, let's see. 
in the meantime. Otherwise, I might have to start that fresh, in which case, not the biggest deal, but we'll go there. The History of Seaman. The man who made the original discovery of Seaman was a French scientist by the name of Dr. Jean-Paul Gasse. Gasse? 1899 to... Eh? Dr. Gus was a member of a special team of French biologists dispatched to Egypt by the French government in the 1930s. When he discovered references to a creature dubbed the Omnipotent Messenger of the Gods among ruins of the Third Dynasty, he determined to pursue this line of research and unravel this mystery. They've got a picture of a papyrus drawing depicting the divine gift of a living creature and fossil of a seaman discovered by the good doctor at the Nile River. In March of 1932, in the city of Alexandria, Dr. Goss happened to meet up with a local resident who had called a seaman while fishing. Dr. Goss obtained a sample of some of the eggs, which he carried back with him to France. When Dr. Goss returned, he immediately attempted to raise the seaman eggs in his Parisian laboratory. But, unfortunately, in the midst of his experiment, seaman died. Shortly after, thereafter, Dr. Goss published a detailed thesis of his work. However... Other leading academics of the day dismissed the young scholar's work as a publicity stunt without the proper evidence, e.g. a living specimen, to support his theories. His work was shunned and no one believed him. Dr. Goss' hypothesis suggested that Seaman was perhaps responsible for transferring knowledge that proliferated during the Third Dynasty across oceans to other lands. This theory eventually became the basis for anthrobioarchaeology, a highly valued field of study today. Soon after the publication of his thesis, Dr. Goss was dismissed from his post. He then disappeared for quite some time. Recently, a diary was discovered detailing Dr. Goss's subsequent work and continued research to unravel the details of Seaman's evolution. For further details, ref- kindly refer to the following rep- uh, website, www.meetseaman.com. Let's go see if that site is still active, shall we? Well, what do you know? This domain is for sale. You can send your offers to dan at danmayer.com. Oh, I see. Okay, so you actually need the VMU. I have a mega memory unit. So... Yeah, let's see. What it says here. When you're ready to begin, connect the Dreamcast controller to port A. Let's see. This file is similar to other minigames and other VMU application files used by other games. Only one VMU application can exist in each VMU. If another VMU is... Let's see. Well, I think I ballsed up. Hang on. I will be right back. We're going to switch out the memory card. That should do it. This memory card does not contain saved CMAN data. Would you like to create new data? Hey, there we go. He showed up on my VMU. All right, cool. Saving. Hey, there we go. Okay. Remember, only one CMAN per habitat, or one CMAN habitat per memory card. All right, so on the fourth month of the tenth day, on, or sorry, on the tenth day of the fourth month of the year 2018, a new habitat has been created for Seaman. Please enjoy your time with Seaman. Press start button. Never touch the analog thumb pad or triggers left right while turning the Dreamcast power on. Doing so may disrupt the controller initialization procedure and result in malfunction. All right, so as we go, I will read through this. I press the start button. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. You'll witness before you a phenomenon like no other, a man of the sea, sea man. This legendary creature will be dependent on you for its life's blood. We'll begin right here in Gasset's laboratory. Where is this laboratory? What awaits you within? You have no idea what Seaman is or how it evolves. This is something you must find out for yourself, as there is little documentation to help you on your way. My name is Leonard Nimoy, and I will be your guide. Well, this is your first day with the Seaman kit. 
Your first step will involve preparing the tank for Seaman's arrival. Adjust the tank settings to be an adequate temperature with sufficient oxygen. While adjusting, keep in mind that blue is the color of the sea, and thus an appropriate color for the care of Seaman. Then take the egg from the storage matrix and place it in the tank. The water's temperature is key to the hatching of the egg. Once hatched, the Nautilus will play a very important role in Seaman's development. Each time you visit this laboratory, I'll be here to offer advice and guidance. If you tire of my voice, you may press the start button to skip at any time. Very well. Let us proceed to the tank. I will never tire of your voice, Mr. Nimoy. Trust me on that. His voice is very calming, isn't it? Also, we've been going for like 20 minutes and I only just got the game started. All right, tapping on the glass. All right. I'll have to read through this as I go. Let's see. There's a lot of mental preparation in here. I'll talk about that at times. Let's see. Just enjoy the lilting sounds of nature as I do this. Alright, I'm not seeing anything about temperature here, so let's go ahead and get started. Ah, there we are. Uh, let's see, food pellets, eggs... I have no sign. I can't turn on the lights. Perhaps. Hold on. Okay, the first thing we must do is place the seaman egg into the tank. Press the left trigger to toggle the display storage matrix. Press and hold right trigger to grab hold of the egg. Let's see what I got. Let's go ahead and grab you. I'm doing something wrong here. Okay, press and hold X and then R. Next, let go of X and R to release the egg into the tank. Alright, let's try this. Now saving. Okay. So it hadn't turned on yet. The lights, at least. So... Is that it? Is there anything else I had to do? It's so dark, I can't tell if I did anything right. Ah, here we go. Let me figure out how to turn this on. Let's see the light. Oh, up access switch for turning that on and off. Okay. I see. All right. Well, I've hatched the eggs, so not much more we can do right now. Let's see. Subsequent operation day two and on. All right. 
so I guess that's it for now. Not nearly enough to make a video out of, so just like I thought, I'll be combining the egg and the next step, which is actually marked here in the instruction manual, in uh, the next, or the next time we see me. We see me? You see me. So, I'll talk to you guys then, okay? Alright. Catch you then. May as well just, uh, position ourselves according... Actually, let's take a look at the tank real quick. Okay, so that's the very top of it. Tried to do a Terminator tap, but yeah, overall, tank seems rather barren. I don't see a Nautilus in here like Leonard Nimoy was talking about, but eh, that could be worse. Let's see, are these all food pellets? These are all different food pellets. All right, well, with that, I'll catch you guys later, okay? See you for the next, or see you tomorrow. Later! Hello. Welcome to the laboratory of Jean-Paul Gasset. Greetings, and welcome back. You're doing a good job. Allow me to give you the highlights for today. The egg is about to hatch. Please watch closely. In order to hatch the egg, it is important to maintain the temperature over 15 but under 20 degrees and keep the oxygen levels high. It should take about five minutes for the egg to hatch. Please be patient. So let us head over to the tank. So it's day two, as you can tell. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on the light. Let's close up. There we go. Okay, so the egg is starting to hatch. Let's, uh... How do I zoom out now? Uh, okay. So, heater needs to be kept at 15 degrees. So, how do I... Oh, hold on. I need to up it to 15. Okay. That's right. The instruction manual actually said between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right around... I'm going to put it at 16. And then we'll just chill out for five minutes. I'll talk with you guys and uh, maybe go over a little bit of the stuff I flubbed yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. We'll go from there. There we go. Nice, even temperature. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, how do I zoom out? Hold on. Let me check the instruction manual. It was in there again. Yeah, everything that we needed to know was right in here. So, let's see. Cleaning, operating the heater, and other habitat devices. We've got that figured out. Ah, observation. Let's see. While pressing B, move the analog thumb pad forwards or backwards to zoom the camera in or out. Okay. There we go. There's the heater over there. And the water is relatively cloudy, so I'm wondering if perhaps I should up the air content to clean it out? Eh, maybe it's alright. Let's see, do we see it over there? We do. Alright. So, now it's... Ooh, hang on. I think it is actually starting to hatch. Look at that. Yeah, you can see motion in there. So, while I have you guys here, I really don't know what else to say there. Um, So, I checked how long to beat on this game last night. And it was about 25 hours from what people were saying. So this may be a 25-day project for me. 
As long as I spend a little bit of time each day, we're good. I'll come in, I will, you know, leave the light off when we finish up for the day, and we'll go back and forth like that. There's actually a fair bit in the instruction manual. There are cute little bits here and there, like tips or, you know, notes and such, like interacting with semen. No, do not attempt to tap, flick, or tickle other household pets, wild or other animals outside of the Seaman kit. Seaman is a very special creature that will respond to such stimuli. However, other animals not in the Seaman kit have been known to become far more aggressive when administered such contact, and it is not advised. That being said, you know, if you want to show your dog some love and stuff, go for it. Just, like, don't flick them on the nose if they're not doing anything wrong. Then again, I don't know if that actually works or not, so... You know, your guess is as good as mine there. How is the heat, by the way? Okay, we're still good. It's just still... A, it's dropping a little bit. Let's just bring that up a couple... decimals. There we go. Alright. So, like I said, this is kind of a completely different project for me, and, you know, in light of all of the ad-friendly stuff that's been going on on YouTube in the past year or so, you know, there was a lot of burnout. Understandably so. And a lot of people decided, you know what? Screw it, we're just gonna get weird. And they did. So in a way, I guess this is my attempt at getting weird, but this is also kind of self-indulgent for me. Because, as I may or may not have pointed out many times before, we were strictly a Nintendo household growing up, so we didn't have a Sega Genesis or a Sega CD, Master System, or the Dreamcast, obviously. Instead, we had Super Nintendo, N64, and GameCube. We never had an NES. But Tempto was actually telling me that... He and a friend used to actually uh, trade the systems back and forth. So, what they would do is... Oop, hang on. Sorry, I locked... Or I unlocked the zoom-in. Anyway, Tempo would tell me that he and a friend would trade the Sega CD back and forth, and he loved a particular game called Sewer Sharks. Which, if you're not familiar, Sewer Sharks is an FMV kind of, like, scrolling shooter. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, I've seen it played on stream, but I have no experience with it myself. So, yeah. I don't know, Tempto, if you're in here and you want to talk about Sewer Sharks at all, go for it, man. I'm not going to judge you if you're not here, because, I mean, yes, this game is weird, and it's basically just me staring at an egg as it starts to hatch. Oh, well. So I know a little bit about what's going to be happening here, and in doing so, I'm going to need to... Oh, uh, what is it? Well, remember how yesterday Leonard Nimoy talked about the Nautilus? I mean, for you guys, it's the same video. But for me, it's the next day. So, when the egg hatches, it will become what's called a mushroomer. And so, it will be... Let's see. It's even detailed in the instruction manual. Let me find it. Ah, here we are. Position the hand icon over the Nautilus at the bottom of the tank and press R to patiently tap it. The mushrooms will float towards the Nautilus and be eaten. Do not be alarmed by this behavior and continue on as normal. Once the Nautilus has consumed at least four mushroomers, it will begin to undergo a transformation. So observe it carefully. Where is the Nautilus in this tank, anyway? Let's zoom out and find it. Hmm. Bottom of the tank, huh? Let's just go ahead and start this up a little bit more. I'm just trying to see which one of those might be it. Now, the other thing is that in order to keep the tank clean, we need to keep it around... Uh, we need to keep the air quality around 80.
Hopefully this will help clear things up. You know, if I screw up by doing this a little too early, we've learned. Oh, no, it is definitely clearing up. Look at that. Oh, there's the Nautilus. Okay. So I was right. Yeah, there we go. Now we can observe in proper glory. You're almost there, I can tell. Let's just go ahead and up your uh, air content a little bit more. There we go. And let's switch back over to the heater. You're good. You're good. Okay. Yeah, this is much better, actually. God, look at all that pulsing happening in there. There's something fascinating about watching an egg hatch. I don't know what it is, though. And don't worry, once Seaman grows, we will, uh... Oh, what's the word? Once Seaman grows, we'll be able to talk to him. I've already got the microphone hooked in. Just look at that, though. It's already started moving so much. Although, I must warn you, the life cycle of Seaman is obviously a little bit alarming. You'll see momentarily. I don't know if there's anything else I have to say at the moment. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Yeah, this tank looks much better now. There we go. You know, this pointer reminds me vaguely of Mist. You guys ever play Mist? Or, I'm sorry, what the fuck does this lever do? I've been stuck on this island for three hours. Yeah. It's not bad, actually. I mean, I had to use the in-game help the whole time because I'm just very bad at puzzles, but here we are. Now, the other thing is, it looks like there's only one mushroomer in there at the moment, but the egg has not completely hatched yet. Rather, at least four of them need to be eaten by the Nautilus, as it said. And... It's going to take time. Leonard Nimoy said about five minutes. Started the recording a couple minutes early, set the heat up around the five minute mark, so hopefully soon. I'll chill out here with you guys until then. Just gonna juggle the air content. Nah, we're okay. I'll just do a little bit more. Likewise, keep the heat right around 17.5. I think we're good there. When you press A, you can speak into the microphone. Hey, there we go! We've got mushroomers. Hello, little friends. Aww, they have eyes. They are eyes, I should say. Now, the next step was to gently and patiently tap the Nautilus. There we go. Look at them go. Alright, let's watch them work. Are you guys good? Ah, there we go. Alright, that's one. One getting eaten. Look at that Nautilus go. Alright, I think one got eaten. Let's make sure at least a few more get eaten. 
Fun fact, did you know that Nautilus, the, uh, oh, there's two. The, the chambered Nautilus, as it were, is actually, I think it's one of the oldest creatures out there. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That's three. Possibly. I don't know if it's like... I don't think the Nautilus is capable of squirting ink. However... Okay, there's... I'm gonna say that's three, so I'll go with one more. What I do know is that the Nautilus is actually able to propel itself very quickly using a jet that's built into its body. Alright, that's four, but let's go with one more to be certain. Nautilus is an odd creature, indeed. Now, the biggest thing here is that if a mushroomer is not eaten by the Nautilus within a few days, it will die. You good, dude? Hmm, doesn't seem to want to eat anymore. There's only four of you guys left, huh? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, look at the way it's twitching, that is not how it normally acts. It's doing its best to stay away from them, so... While we're waiting, I am going to look up Tampered Nautilus facts. I'm glad I didn't screw up. I was worried about that when I was reading back through that. Chambered Nautilus. The Chambered Nautilus, Nautilus Pompilius, also called the Pearly Nautilus, is the best known species of Nautilus. Let's go to Wikipedia and find this out. The shell, when cut away, reveals a lining of lustrous nacre, 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 N A C R E, and displays a near perfect equilang. Equiangular spiral. Although it is not a golden spiral, the shell exhibits countershading, being light on the bottom and dark on top. This is to help avoid predators because when seen from above, it blends in with the darkness of the sea, and when seen from below, it blends in with the light coming from above. Yeah, the Nautilus is not doing well. Look at that. Was the shell always like that, or did it split partially? I can't tell. Well, either way. Let's see. Development. Unlike most cephalopod cephalopods, the chambered nautilus lacks a larval stage. Their shells develop inside their eggs. Oh. I think it's dying. You're not doing very well at all, are you, Mr. Nautilus? I am sorry. I mean, I know it's part of life and you are crucial to the life cycle of Seaman, but, like, cephalopods are kind of a spirit animal for me, you know? I'm just wondering if there's anything I have to do here. Oh? This is... unusual. I did not expect this. However, I know that the shell is integral to the Nautilus' survival, so, uh... You're not gonna last much longer, are you? This is kind of horrifying, but I must watch. It's the magic of life. 
So, if you haven't been able to gather what's going on inside of it, the Nautilus is being eaten from inside by the Mushroomers. And it's not doing very well, as you can tell. That's right. Seaman starts its life as a parasite. I think that's pretty cool, honestly. Unfortunate for the Nautilus, but rather cool. I'm honestly more curious about where the Nautilus shell went. It just seems to have sunk into the, uh, bottom of the sand there. Or the substrate, I guess, would be the more accurate term. Hello, friends. How are you? Oh, look at them. You guys doing good? You're not quite at the Gilman stage yet, I'm pretty sure. Hold on. Let me check things. Okay, once the Nautilus has been eaten... I'm not sure if there's anything else I have to do from here on. Because, as I can tell, Seaman has not reached the Gilman stage. How are you guys? How many of you are there now? Like, three? Plus the... Four mushroomers over here. They'll die within a couple days, I know that. Okay, so there's four of you here. Well, that's a plus. Let me go ahead and turn this up a little bit for you guys. There we go. Keep the air going. Hello, friends. You guys can't tell when I'm using the microphone, I'm gonna have to have Editron put in a little icon there. But, uh... Yeah, let's see. What's up? I feel like I should leave them be for now, especially considering that they're getting used to their new environment. So... Maybe we should zoom out for now. I mean, I've done everything I can for the time being. So, uh, yeah. This should be the first video worth. There we go. Alright, so with that, I think I'm going to turn off the light for these guys. And we should be good. Alright. So, Leonard Nimoy, take us out. Would you like to save and end the session?